Hello everybody and welcome back. This time chapter 7, we're only going to do part of chapter 7. We're going to do budgeting. We'll save risk for another week. When I look at budgeting, this these are some of the things that uh, this slide has always made me laugh, right? So I use it a lot. Cost management, what are your first thoughts, right? And you could read all the questions um, uh, around it, but really this was me, right? When I first looked into cost estimating. I was not sure where to begin, but I knew that to be successful, I had to have one or more estimates so that I could go forward and budget my program and I had to have control. So that really balances this entire discussion. Don't be this person. You don't have to be. We're going to talk about that. So uh, budgeting. Budgeting uh, really does involve all aspects of the project management, right? Uh, the um, in resource management, for example, uh, I'm working to estimate the resources and human resources. Of course, I most would agree are our biggest cost in any pro and almost any project. In schedule management, I have to determine the right number of resources to ensure that each schedule activity goes as planned per the duration, the schedule duration that I was working towards. In scope management, I have to make sure that there's money to complete the scope statement with the right number and skill sets of people. In risk management, I need money to cover the reserves that we've talked about in previous weeks and that we'll continue to talk about. And we call them largely contingency reserves, right? Money set aside for risks. And in procurement, for example, I need to allocate portions of the budget to contracts, things that met that make or buy decision and I decided I can't make myself. I have to go buy either because I don't make it as a company or because the people that make it are too busy or uh, they're deployed or somewhere else, right? Lots of reasons that you can end up with that buy decision. And so these, all of these ideas begin to impose constraints on each other, which is going to put pressure on your budget. Now, um, there are tools that we're going to use along the way, right? Earned value management is one of the best possible controls that you can put on budget activities. We'll call, we'll discuss uh, EVM uh, today a bit. And uh, sometimes earned value management is the overall design. Earned value analysis, they're, they're almost used synonymously. It's okay in this course if you do, right? But earned value management is this overarching management approach. And earned value analysis is doing the actual math of it. But if we use them synonymously, I'm okay. But it's about uh, that sort of uh, budgeting and control that we're looking for, that monitoring and controlling mechanism. Now, uh, like any uh, project, we're going to make forecasts, right? And forecasts will have some uncertainty in them. There's no doubt about it, right? And um, this uncertainty uh, regarding maybe the use of personnel or the use of equipment or the price or the cost of, of other rentals like facilities and things. Uh, so our goal is to reduce the uncertainty, right? To try and create, uh, of course, this is true in all of project management, standardized, repeatable processes, reduce uncertainty, and frankly, reduce costs overall. I am always, in terms of continuous process improvement, looking for that uh, standardized, repeatable approach, right? And so, uh, when it comes to forecasting, I want to collect work performance data while I'm building it. From that data, I want to use my team to analyze it, and that's called work performance information. From there, I'm able to make more accurate cost forecasts. And if I'm not, if that forecast is not within reason or where I want it to be based on the controls I've previously set, I previously determined what controls, what are the limits, what's what gets out of bounds, right? I've determined that in advance. So I'm looking at these forecasts and I'm, I'm using this work performance information 
and I'm looking at these forecasts and I go, mm, okay, let's make an adjustment. And that's when I would do a change request, right? And then, of course, if that change request is approved, we talked about that in previous weeks by Change Control Board, I would go ahead and update my project management plan and my project documents. So those are ways to reduce the uncertainty, a process, if you will. Look at the work performance data, analyze it to create work performance information, maybe even turn that into a short summary called a work performance report. Uh, measure your cost forecasts and compare it to your standards or metrics. Do change requests and update your plans. Now, uh, there's a term often used in project management. It's used elsewhere too. It's called a heuristic. A heuristic means uh, several things. One of the things, it's, it's kind of like a rule of thumb. What's a rule of thumb, right? And so a heuristic really can be a mental shortcut, that rule of thumb right, that eases our cognitive load when we're making decisions, right? So uh, examples that employ heuristics include using a trial and error, uh, a rule of thumb, as I mentioned, or even an educated guess. So while heuristics can speed up our problem in decision making, that's why we use them. Uh, just be aware they can also introduce errors. I'm not downplaying heuristics. We all use them. I use them all the time to make a good, solid judgment quickly. But we, we can use rules of thumb, right? So in construction, we can estimate costs like price per square foot. It's really a form of parametric estimating, we said. Right? That's a heuristic, right? The house you buy isn't really that price, but that's going to be pretty close by the time they do the other add-ins you wanted and some other things and update the numbers. It'll be reasonable. It'll be close. It's a heuristic. It's a rule of thumb. It's parametric estimating. Um, and uh, of course, we can adjust them for special conditions. Now, some budgeting concepts to think about, right? Uh, we can budget based on a traditional approach, right? And there are many, and each company has their own culture. Uh, I prefer an approach that is more about life cycle costing, right? So with, with each life cycle, and we've looked in the previous couple of weeks, uh, pictures of the circles that create the life cycle phases. In each life cycle, I'm going to estimate my costs. And at the start of each life cycle, I'm going to do initiating, then planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing of that phase of the life cycle. And in that, I'm going to have, I will start in initiating with my estimated budget for that phase, but then I'm going to do more detailed planning to make sure that I've really got it down. And then, of course, I mentioned earned value analysis, another way to support uh, our budgeting concepts and to uh, forecast where we're going. An excellent uh, development and control tool. And then, of course, I want to trace expenses. And I'll do that. We talked about in previous weeks through the work breakdown structure which has assigned to it control accounts. That was in a previous uh, lecture and previous reading. Um, if that doesn't sound familiar, please go back and review those. But each work breakdown structure item, the work packages, for example, will have a control account. And its purpose is to trace these expenses to the specific tasks that we're doing. Now, uh, so we want to estimate uh, budgets, and that can be a difficult thing to do. There's no doubt about it, right? Um, there may be not, there, there might not be a lot of historical data. Remember, I, I mentioned I like lessons learned or historical records. I go to the shelf, pull a book off the shelf, and look to what Jimmy or Susie did, right? Uh, or Juan or somebody that, that had done this previously. Well, let's be honest. Most project companies or companies that run projects don't keep good records. This is my experience, right? May not be true, and I hope it isn't in yours. Records matter for this reason, but they may or may not exist. I hope they do. Uh, if not, if the records don't exist, feel free to go interview the person that ran the project. They could probably pull up some notes and share them with you. Now, um, even with similar projects in bullet two, there may be significant differences. So, 
Remember, each project is by definition unique and time bound. And because it's unique, even though a project, if there are historical records, seems the same, it won't be exactly. So you want to assess that quickly. Again, th these historical records, they make excellent ROM budgets, rough order of magnitude budgets, right? They're, and a rough order of magnitude budget is accurate to minus 25% to plus 75% of your actual cost, what it will be. But it's a good starting point, right? That's still a pretty wide range, yes. And we are working towards a definitive budget, which by the end of planning should end up minus 5% to plus 10%. That's a definitive budget. And that's what we're working to. But we got to start somewhere. And historical records are a great place uh, to be. And then, of course, interview and talk to other people, your team members, people in finance, people that have done the project before, a great way to get the information. Now, uh, continuing with that same theme about how to estimate, uh, because it is difficult, right? Uh, multiple people have some control over the budget, right? Make sure they're incorporated. Maybe set up a round table of those people, right? Um, and that there is more flexibility regarding the estimates of the inputs, right? So we want to assess uh, the material and labor costs, right? Do I need all level one project managers, say that's the highest level, or can I have one level one to manage three level three and one level four project manager, right? Uh, that adds a little flexibility into your budget if those are the skill sets required to get the job done. And of course, the accounting system has to be set up to track the data. I mentioned again, control accounts, which are part of your work breakdown structure. And um, uh, usage of labor and material can be very lumpy over time or can bulk. So what I like to do is use a um, resource histogram. So I can, a histogram is just a bar chart, right? And a resource histogram lets me assess, see where these bumpy patterns are at with my resources. And maybe I can smooth it out, smooth it out, level it out. You want to be careful of the schedule's critical path, that you don't level over a critical path item and make it more uh, problematic in your schedule. But otherwise, you'd use that resource histogram to try and level things out and make it more consistent. Now, uh, continuing with this uh, degree of accuracy and complexity, right? What makes estimating difficult? So I'm going to go a little uh, deeper uh, into the different types of cost estimating techniques uh, for a few minutes, right? But first, remember the diagram we started with that. Ah, what's going on here? Well, this graphic uh, shows that once we think through the cost estimating process, it's not all uh, that that complicated and does not have, uh, and, and this has, frankly, to me, a very reasonable flow, right? So we can put together our plan, we can define our baselines, which are only three. There's cost baseline, schedule baseline, and scope baseline. That's that iron triangle we want to measure. And we, so we'll, with that, we'll identify the cost drivers, do our analysis, and look at cost as an independent variable, right? And we'll flow this information into our earned value management system that we're going to use, where we can track the actual data, uh, to what we projected to do, right? Always comparing in control, the control process, the planned costs versus the actual costs. So I think you could use this diagram as a starting point just to smooth out this degree of difficulty that we had started with. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We'll come back with the types of budgeting next.